Welcome to Bandit's Keep Actual Play. I'm Daniel. Today we are continuing our original Dungeons and Dragons solo play using my own version of Chainmail. The fangs of Peebluff have been traveling across <laughs> a long way across the map. They're so close to their destination that they have decided to fight these giant spiders that are in their way, as opposed to being knocked off course again. Let's get to it. So the party has been traveling and they encountered nine giant spiders. So they tried to evade and were unsuccessful, but instead of running because they're low on rations and close to their goal, they've decided to fight these creatures. So first of all, we're gonna, I already decided that there was no surprise. I can't remember if I rolled for that or if I just didn't remember to, but because they're not surprised, the first thing we wanna do is figure out distance. So OD&D tells us that when there's no surprise that we're gonna go 4d6 times 10 yards is the distance. Okay, so we're looking at 100 yards away. Okay, cool. Now, when we encountered these, I rolled here on the large insect or animal table, okay? So when we look at large insects in the back, we see category includes giant ants, any prehistoric monsters, armor class can be from eight to two hit dice, should range from two to 20 for 20 would be a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It goes into damage, etc. I could have also used small uh, insects or small animals and made the giant spiders a little bit less giant. So based on that, since I don't have giant spiders in OD&D and I'm using chain mail as my combat system, which is here. So we're gonna run through this a little bit in this first combat. Well, I'm basically using this, which is unchained, which is my own hack of chain mail with OD&D, but we'll talk about that. I've established that the spiders are going to be work as, as follows. They attack as heavy foot plus one, which is basically the same as, let's say, a fighter, a first level fighter using a sword. They are going to defend as heavy foot, so like chain mail, but two heavy footmen, meaning that it takes two simultaneous hits to kill a spider. And if they take somebody out, if they defeat them, because in this game, you're not necessarily dead at zero, you are defeated. If they defeat you, you're going to be unconscious with the poison if they, they're gonna go try to drag you away. And, it, and then if you are rescued, you're gonna have to make a constitution check to see if you're still alive. Basically, you'll die. That We'll go into that if it comes down to it. Hopefully the party will defeat them. So that being said, we have 100 yards or 10 inches in distance. I have the spiders here. I got some minis. I'm not always gonna use minis, but I got some minis. Let's set this thing up and let's see what we can do. Okay, so I have my combat procedure here. I will read it to you and we'll walk through step by step. Both sides declare actions. Saving throws are made for ongoing threats. Both sides roll d6 for initiative, so we're gonna actually do it step by step. So I'm gonna roll monsters will be the duck die and the player characters will be the, uh, the sparkly die. Okay, player characters get a six, the monsters get a three. Now what initiative means in this is really just movement. You can decide when you get initiative if you wanna move first or you want the enemy to. In this case, they are gonna move first. The reason why is what they wanna do is form a line. There's a few things going on here. Every RPG talks about, most RPGs talk about the idea that like, you should protect the magic users and stuff like that, but they rarely have actual things in there to do it. In my version of Chainmail, if you decide you are protecting people, you just absorb their hits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rearrange our party line. This is a magic user. Now you cannot cast a spell and move. So they're not actually gonna, oh, I should have declared actions. So let me just tell you what they're gonna do. They're going to form a line. The magic users are gonna move back behind. So they're not gonna be able to cast this round, unfortunately. The elf has a bow, they can actually shoot and move, so they're going to shoot the bow and then move back because they are actually an elf magic user. Um, in other words, they're not wearing any armor. So they're gonna actually shoot their long bow and then move back because they're not gonna be able to shoot twice, unfortunately, because the, the spiders are likely gonna get into melee. But anyways, if the spiders are not in melee, they can actually shoot at the end of the round as well. We'll deal with that when the time comes. So they're gonna form a line, the magic users are gonna move to the back, the elf is gonna shoot their bow, and then when the spiders close on them, which they will, obviously, I mean, they assume they're going to, they will then in do melee. So here we go. So I'm just gonna move people one at a time because it's easier for me. This is the magic user. They can move 12 inches. They want to be able to get in the position to, to basically behind. Unfortunately, this magic user has, a, they both have a sleep spell. They could cast it, but because I didn't know if I was gonna win initiative, I decided not to have them stand still. So that's why I'm doing it this way. They're just gonna move back here. The, this guy here is a cleric. So I have, by the way, I have my little list here. 
So I, I'm keeping them more or less in order of where they are so I don't lose because I'm not used to the minis yet. So I'm going to move, uh, Barak the Cleric is going to move, yeah, it's a Cleric. They're going to move here to form a line. This is the Elf. Like I said, they're going to move up, shoot, and then move back. So I'll move them first. They're going to move up. Actually, split moves and shooting happens at once. So I'll do the Elf as soon as I get everybody in place. This, this Dwarf is going to move up. This fighter with two-handed sword is going to move up. They're basically forming a line. Now, again, if they spread out too much, then the uh, they won't be able to defend the magic users, right? We were going to go in the back. This is also a dwarf, but he's actually in light armor, so he's going to actually pull back. Um, they don't have a... Yeah, and they only have a battle axe. They're only going to actually fight if they if they... If they have to, because again, they're not in they're not in heavy enough armor, and they will definitely die. And this is also a magic user. They're going to move back here. So we're basically forming this party line here. Now, again, the elf can shoot and move, so they're going to shoot now. The way this works is, I'm going to look at the distance, which they're going to shoot at the closest one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're nine inches away, and I'm going to go into my my chart over here. They have a longbow between seven and 14 inches is a medium range. So no, uh, no change. They're attacking heavy foot. So they get one die per man, five or six hits. So unfortunately this arrow is not going to kill the, the spider, but we will track if it hits it or not. Five. Okay. So this spider right here has been hit once this round. That matters. Cause again, we're taking the whole round into consideration. Okay. Perfect. And then the elf is going to move back cause they don't want to get hit either. <laughs> leaving these four guys up front, which may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> now, they, the, the move phase is over for the party, so now the enemy gets to move. They can move 12, which I think we've determined. Let's see, I'll just start with this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they can get up there. So he's gonna get up. So let me just count 12 back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So basically, these guys are going to get up here, which is pretty good because I'm just going to put one on each. <laughs> For now, that just makes sense. These guys were all like an inch behind, which is good because I'm not going to worry about it exactly at this moment. Because next round, the party is going to hopefully cast a spell. Um, Although they may not be, able to, they, well, we'll see what they do. Okay, so that's now the movement phase is over. Now we go into missile fire, which uh, because the elf could split move, they already got to shoot, so they don't need to shoot now. This is important because once things are engaged in Malay, they can't, uh, they actually can't <laughs> missile fire into them. So that's why the elf wanted to shoot first. That's the advantage of being an elf. Magic spells uh, get cast, but there's no magic spells. And then we go into Malay. Now, what we're going to do here is all melee is simultaneous, but I'm going to roll for the party first and then for the monsters. So we're going to go down the list here. Again, these guys, this guy right here who's fighting the cleric has already been hit once. Our cleric is fighting as heavy foot. So I'm going to look at my list here. And again, this once you start doing this, I mean, I probably do this off the top of my head, but so I'm doing it for you guys. I want to show you each time. Heavy foot versus heavy foot, one die per man, six hits. So if this if this cleric rolls a six here, that uh, spider will be dead. They do not, unfortunately. Okay. Now we move on to the next character in line, which is my other cleric. They're going to, these two guys are gonna actually double team this one spider because they know they can't. Actually, he's close enough, so he's gonna actually attack that spider because we'll take a chance trying to kill that one. No, five, okay, bummer. Okay, <laughs> no good. No spider's dead yet. Now we're going to come to this dwarf here. This dwarf is a fighter. They fight as man plus one. They have a battle axe, which is heavy foot. So it's the same thing, but they get, they get to add one to their die. So both of these guys are going to attack that one spider. So he's rolling one die. Uh, basically, he needs a six, but he's adding one to the die. Misses. Okay, bummer. This guy here has a two-handed sword, though, so he's a little different. He's armored foot. So armored foot gets uh, armored foot versus heavy gets one die per man five or six hits and he's adding one. It's not going to matter because he is actually um, 
He's actually not going to be able to kill it, but I think this dwarf here being bold is going to make a move and go for it as well. He's going to risk himself by going up there, but that's what he's going to do. He, and I say that because he's within combat. If you're within three inches of a monster, you're technically in melee, so you can technically fight. No, nothing. Okay, so the dwarf's not going to bother because he can't do it anyways. So unfortunately, the party has hit nothing, and now the monsters get to go. So the this first one's going to attack this cleric. The cleric is wearing... Uh, chainmail armor, so it's heavy foot versus heavy foot. And if we look here, one die per man, six hits, but remember they fight as heavy foot plus one. So this first one is attacking this cleric. If it hits the cleric, the cleric's dead. Three, misses. This next one, same thing again. The spiders aren't smart enough to fight in pack tactics. This cleric is actually armored foot. He's wearing plate armor, which means that the, the spider actually can't even hit it because it needs two heavy feet to attack. So it doesn't know the first round, it's gonna just keep trying to attack. So it can't do anything, basically. The dwarf up front here is also in plate, which means they can't be hit. And the fighter also can't be hit. So basically, at this moment, this first round, unfortunately they, unfortunately they didn't hit anything because it was bad. Only one of them can even be hit by the spiders at this point. When more spiders join the fray, that's going to make a difference. Technically, this elf could shoot again at the end of the round, but I'm not going to waste an arrow because I know that I can't kill it because it needs to be hit twice. So it's a little meta, but that's just the way it is. I can't kill it. I'm not going to bother wasting an arrow. The round ends. There's no saving throws to happen. We go back to the beginning again. So what's going to happen is now we're just clearing actions. All the spiders are just going to charge forward. These two magic users, because the spiders actually can't get all the ways in here, this magic user right here, who is Hannah, is going to cast sleep on the any spiders that are not in the melee. So they're going to cast it past the party and into any remaining spiders, hoping to take them out. It would have been nice to get them earlier, but that's the risk we take. The elf will also attack with the bow if any creatures are not in melee. The other magic user will stand by and do nothing. This dwarf will only attack if he needs to. Right now he's being protected. But these three guys are all going to just melee. So at this point, we're going to roll. The movement only doesn't matter at all here because basically what ends up happening is the, the creatures aren't moving more than half their movement, so the elf can't shoot like as a pass-through shooting. So basically it doesn't matter who wins melee. So, I'm, I'm sorry. So basically it doesn't matter who wins initiative, so I'm just going to move the spiders because that's the only people that are moving. So these spiders are going to move up. They really can't. They're too big to really do anything else, but I'll say that these ones will move up to try to get involved. And again, because I know this is just, we're using mini, so it seems like they just go around them. But based on the rules, they can't break this line because these guys are defending. You can uh, you could imagine it any way you want, but that's effectively what's happening. Now, because of this, again, they actually, they're kind of trying to pile over each other. They can't get in it. These guys in the back, I'm going to rule, are not in the melee. Okay? So this is good for us uh, as, a, as a team here. Missile happens first. You know, the elf realizing that magic missile is going to be cast, or not magic missile, sleep is going to be cast, doesn't waste an arrow. It's not worth it. This magic user casts the sleep spell. So if we look at the sleep spell, we can see that it will affect from 2 to 12 second level types. The range is 24 inches, so they could have easily done it. Um, so I'm going to roll, and then if we get less than the amount, then we'll determine randomly which ones are asleep. So 2 to 12 is 2d6. Ugh, five. Okay. It's going to affect five of them. Actually, that might be perfect. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so these five spiders are now unconscious. And again, spiders aren't smart enough to, to like wake each other up. So these guys just go unconscious and they're down. That's the spell period. Uh, there was no uh, missile, so now we do go into melee, which again is simultaneous, but I'm going to roll the party first. So the party realizing they need to like team up here because they're having trouble they're actually going to do the same thing. These two guys are going to attack one spider. These two are going to attack a spider. So I'm just going to add up their attacks. These guys are both... These are the two clerics. So they're both heavy foot. So two dice. Uh, six is hit. Nothing. Okay. Okay, over here we have a heavy foot. And we have an armored foot. The, it's so actually that will matter. So I'm going to... The armored foot is going to be on this die. Heavy foot on this one, and they're both plus one, so if this one gets a five or a six, and if this one gets a four, five, or six, then we get one hit. Really, we need both dice to be there. 
No. Okay, one hit against the spider, which just doesn't do anything because that's the end of the round. Again, the spiders can actually only hurt this one guy. So they're not smart enough. Actually, I'm going to use effectively what is an oracle. So I've seen Matt Jackson do this, so I don't know if it's the only place, but this is where I saw it. Basically, he uses two dice. One's yes, one's no. I'm going to say the white die here is yes, this is no. Do the spiders realize they can't penetrate the armor? This won't happen this round, but maybe next round. So if I roll higher on the white die, the next die they might try to team up on somebody. Okay, they do. They're going to realize at the end of this round they just can't hurt this guy. these guys. That might mean any number of things. It might mean they realize they can hurt this one, which we'll figure out. I don't think that's likely. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to roll like this. And if these two, if either one of these two beat this one, then it's not likely they figure out that this guy's not impenetrable. In other words, they might think that nobody can be hit. Okay, it's, it, it's tie, so it's unclear. We'll figure it out next round. So right now, there's just one spider that can attack that one cleric. If he rolls a five or a six, that cleric is down. Okay, the cleric's down. Bummer. Okay, cleric went down. And again, now based on what I'm narrating here, that they figure, they're they feeling like they can't penetrate these, these guys' shells, they might just try to take this cleric and run. Again, I'll, I'll figure that out after we get to the end of the round, which we can do... You know, the elf again could shoot one of those uh, spiders because it's not in a melee. But again, why waste its arrow? It's They're asleep. Nothing's going to happen. So that ends round two, and we'll go into round three. Okay, so we're going to declare actions. These three guys are going to continue to fight uh, as, as usual. I'm going to rule that this spider, because it's wrapping, is going to be wrapping up this cleric, is kind of out of melee. It's not going to make an attack this round. It takes a, it's going to take at least a round for it to wrap him up. So I'm going to say that the elf can actually shoot it. So the elf's going to shoot both of its arrows, one then second one at that uh, spider. And the magic users are going to stay back. I think because they're doing so badly, this guy's going to step up and take a risk. He's still going to be protected by these guys, but he's going to step up to fight. So he's going to, I'm just going to move him slightly forward to say. So these three are all going to try to attack one spider. Actually, they're all just going to team up on this middle spider is what they're going to do. They're just going to, well, eh, doesn't have room to do that. They don't. I'm going to say these three are going to attack this one spider. This spider, this spider, this spider will figure out if they uh, are smart enough to stay or not, and the elf's going to attack over here. So again, we're going to do the oracle thing. Do they... Actually, I'm going to do a morale check. So the spider is an animal. Its morale is just basically seven. I'm going to roll 2d6. If, the, uh, if I beat that number, they will stay fighting. If not, they're going to retreat. Okay. These spiders realize they're not having it and they're gonna actually pull back. That's their plan. All actions are declared. Let's roll initiative. Okay, so you might say, well, why even bother rolling initiative unless the party's gonna chase them? Well, because it will matter because if the party wins, they can let the monsters go first and then they can follow them if they wanna chase them. That's the only time it would matter. If they just stay here, it's not gonna matter. None of these guys have missile weapons and really they see their guy down. So what they wanna do is focus on that spider. So they're just gonna let these spiders move. So they're gonna let the spiders go. Well, no matter what happens, like I'll roll. The, the sparkly die is the characters, how to explain. Okay, didn't matter. The spiders win, they choose to move first, of course, because they're, they're running. So they're actually gonna move and retreat. Of course, they leave their dead, their sleeping friends because they don't know. They run. The party then chooses to move. These guys are gonna surround this spider that is taking their cleric friend which does actually make it so that the elf can't shoot, but this makes mo way more sense. In fact, this guy's even going to join them because they really need to take the spider out. So at this point, this spider is occupied. It's not going to make an attack right now. That's just going to get ambushed, and we're going to see what happens. We've got one, two, three that are heavy foot. That is, they're rolling uh, a die here. Well, actually, hold on. One of them gets a bonus. So let me just do it this way. I'll do one at a time. Two-handed sword, four through six will be a hit. Misses. Fighter, five or six hits. Misses. Well, these guys suck. Two clerics, six is hit. No, nothing. So the spider's fending itself off. It cannot... Um, oh, no, that guy's a fighter, actually. So let me... It was a two. It wouldn't hit anyways. Okay, the spider fends itself off. It does not take any blows. And... We're going to go into the next round. Okay, round four. 
the party's going to keep no matter what the party if they try to run with the with the cleric the party's going to going to follow basically they're going to try to kill the spider they don't want they don't know if their friend's dead yet they're going to try to get get to uh, get the spider dead these sleeping spiders are slept slept these guys are long gone so i'm just going to move them out of the battlefield for a second initiative will matter party sparkly die spider non sparkly okay spider goes first okay spider's taking the the cleric and it's going to move you can move 12 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Okay, this is where movement comes in. I talked about this a little bit before about armor and stuff. Well, the spider won and it moved 12. The <laughs> Most of the party could not move that fast. So they've got to kind of make a choice here. I think what we're going to do, these guys can only move six, you know, so they're going to. Actually, this guy can move there. He can move 12. How brave is he? Okay, I don't know the characters yet, so I'm going to say, yes, he'll chase. No, he won't. Yeah, he's going for it. He's chasing them. But because all this movement's happening, the elf can actually do a split move, and they're going to try to shoot the, the, the guy. Again, it's a straight shot with the longbow. They get a six will hit. No, nothing. And this guy, you know, he catches the spider. He's the same speed as him. So he's going to make an attack and he cannot really kill it, but he's going to try anyways. Four misses. And at this point, I think the spider is basically going to be gone. The, uh, the, the, the dwarf is by himself. Nobody else can catch the spider. And that's the end of the cleric. Okay, bummer. <laughs> However, they did defeat, through a sleep spell, five spiders, which I'll make a note of. This sheet here on the back has a place for the monsters, which I'll make a note of right now. Okay. Well, it's a sad day, as one of, they've lost one of their party members. Okay, so just in case you're curious, if, if they had recovered the cleric, I would have gone to Men in Magic, and I would have looked at it in the Constitution table. Now, I'm going to look up the cleric who got taken, who was Barak. And we're looking at his Constitution, which is 12. And we're going to look here, Constitution 9 to 12, 60 to 90%. So he has a 90% chance of surviving. So actually, if they had recovered him, I would roll percentile to see if he had survived the poison of the spiders. Four, he definitely would have. So unfortunately, maybe that's a sad thing. The spider's poison didn't kill Barak, and he his fate is terrible. But the party must move on and try to recover the treasure at the end of this map. By the way, if you're curious, the spiders came from this pack here. I'll put a, I'll put a link. I think I got it on, my, on Amazon. They've been in the field for 26 days so close to their goal and have now lost a party member, the loyal cleric. But pushing on, the party rests for the night and is going to move the next day. They're in the clear, so I'm going to roll a d6. On a 1, they get lost and have to move a random direction. On a 6, they have an encounter, otherwise they can move 3 hexes. 2. 1, 2, 3. They will enter the hex that they're looking for tomorrow. And it is now the 27th of January. Okay, they, they, I still have to roll to see if they can get to where they're going. So again, we're still in the clearing. Let's see if they can get to this dungeon. Five, they do. Okay, so at this point, they're actually not in a great position because they have reached the dungeon but they're very low on supply. It would make sense for them to do some hunting, but that's many days off to one of these hunting spaces. So they're going to probably be moving a little slower on the way back because they're going to be low on supply. I might give them a chance that they can refresh some food if they go to the river or possibly that pond there, but we'll deal with that after we delve into the dungeon. So one small thing that I've encountered here, which I wasn't really considering, and this is part of learning and playing, is that these treasure maps, as they're designed, it seems like they should just lead to a hoard of treasure, which is great, right? But if we look at the just the vast amount of treasure that's in this particular hoard, and then we look at the monsters, because this is what I did in between things, and we look at the treasure types, what we find is that there are very few monsters that could possibly have, you know, that level of treasure. And we're looking at things like treasure type H for that. And treasure type H is the kind of treasure that 
dragons have, <laughs> or, or dwarves, interestingly enough. So I thought about many ways to do this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the treasure maps the way I'm going to use them, and then before I actually set out, I'll do a little bit more kind of pre-planning, which I didn't do this time, so they would have known that they were going to try to face a dragon, and maybe they wouldn't have chosen this map, right? So instead of doing that, because we're already here, I'm going to make this into a three-level dungeon. I'm going to have, I looked up three monster types as major types that could possibly be on a dungeon at this level, with their accumulated treasure could potentially equal what's there. So it's not going to be exactly what's from the treasure map, I don't think, but it's going to be similar. And the first level of this dungeon is going to have uh, undead, so ghouls. Unfortunately, we just lost a cleric, which is a real bummer. So we're going to go into the dungeon, and I'm going to actually use for this one, I'm going to do this lots of different ways, and if you have ways that you've created dungeons and you want to list them below, I would love to hear. For this one, I'm going to use the deck of many dungeons. Now, I'm not going to use everything in this, because this is made for... Uh, I believe 5th edition, Dungeons and Dragons, and also I find the treasure that it gives you in the monsters is bleh. So I'm just going to use this for the shapes of the rooms and kind of moving through the dungeon. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill it using od and d knowing that the primary monster type is uh, on the level, is at least on the first level, is going to be ghouls. So let me show you how this works, and we'll set up for it. Basically, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you quickly how it works, and then we'll actually set this up. It's a pretty cool thing, obviously, if you want to invest in it, uh, I'll put a link. But you pick a starting room, so this one, let's say, and then what you do is you draw cards and you effectively build out a dungeon. Now, in this case, if I, if let's say I just did that, there's obviously no way down. I would have to either pick a different card or choose something else. There are end cards, which I'll have to dig out, that have stairways and stuff like that in there. So normally what would happen is Let's say I came in here, I explored, and then I came over here and I wrote, pulled this card. I would just take this one away and then use one with stairs. Or in my case, I'm probably just going to add a stair to it with my own, <laughs> you know, my own, uh, my own fiat, as you will. So what I'm going to do is set this up. It's going to move this board and stuff. So it's a little neater to, to look at. And uh, we'll, we'll go there. 